Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 70. <music> This is Jonesy. He's um, running around the house playing, so I don't think he's gonna sit still for long. Jonesy, look, you gotta say hi. <laughs> um, this is our sweet little kitten. He's four months old. He's adorable. <laughs> and he wants to get down and play with Diego. Oh, and... He's off. Hi everyone. Welcome back to another floss tube episode. I'm Liz. Um, this is my channel about cross stitch and now also cats because we got a new cat this week. <laughs> um, as you just saw, as you just met Mr. Jonesy, he is adorable. Um, we picked him up from our local Austin Humane Society and, um, he is a rambunctious wild child little kitten right now who is <laughs> running all over our house you know, playing with anything that isn't nailed down. So that's been a lot of fun this week. And it's also been great because Diego, who is our um, adult black cat, he is 11 and he still loves to run around and chase and be chased. And Ginger, our elderly Ginger cat, she is she wants nothing to do with Diego. She will not chase him. She doesn't want to be chased at all. She won't play with him. And so, um, we, we wanted to get Diego a kitten. <laughs> so we did. And they are already the best of friends. They like to nap together. Um, they like to roll around on the floor together, chase each other. Um, it's great. It's been really fun. So um, yeah, as y'all might know, a few months ago, six months ago, um, we lost our dear orange birdie. And um, yeah, we've just been kind of waiting for the right time. And after over Christmas, we talked about it and we were ready to adopt a little cat, a little kitten. So yeah, we did that this week and just very excited about it. <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, you might see that all I've been posting are cat photos this week. I have also been stitching, but it's been a lot of kitten time. So um you know, I'll get over it. I'll stop posting so many pictures of him, I promise. <laughs> so that was the life update. Other than that, um, oh, I forgot to kind of, I guess, I think I mentioned it on a video a couple of weeks ago, but my mom is home now and doing amazing, like almost completely back to normal. Still, I think more tired than she was before because she's still, you know, still healing a little bit, but just like back home, back to cross stitching, um, you know, doing great. So thank you all so much for all the well wishes over the past couple of months while you know our family was kind of dealing with that and um yeah she's doing so good and she also wants to say thank you to everyone who reached out and um was thinking of her and so appreciated so yay mom is home we went over there yesterday and watched one of the um nfl playoff games with her and my dad and brought over some appetizers and snacks and stuff and um talked wedding planning because we just booked another trip to las vegas to go do um like our food tastings cake tastings decor planning hair and makeup trial engagement shoot <laughs> it's gonna be a busy three days <laughs> so um Fingers crossed mom and dad might be able to come with us, um, depending on how she's feeling in a couple of months, uh, a month and a half. I think it's a month and a half. So it's good. We're going to play it by ear, but um, yeah, it's really exciting. So yeah, that's what's going on with me. Um, I also have been stitching and I had a really, really big finish this week. So let me show you. Winter Rose Manor. I finally finished it and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Already went and picked out a frame. It's being built. <laughs> Here she is. All done. Um, so I stitched this one on 40 Count Brenda's Brew by r, &R Fabrics. 
and I used all of her called for colors except for my white which is the toasted marshmallow by classic color works and as I told you guys last week I would have had it done last week except I ran out of the white and so that came in on Monday and I was able to finish up all of the rest of the snow under the house on Monday night and it was a wrap <laughs> so yeah Oh, I'm so happy with it. Um, so I actually took this one to my local frame shop in Cedar Park called Hang Ups, which has just like an amazing variety of moldings. Um, my Michaels hasn't really changed up their selection in the last year. And so I knew, um, like I kind of know what my Michaels has to offer. And so I wanted to go to Hang Ups, which is my local frame store to see their options, even though they don't offer the discounts like Michael does. They're a local business, right? Like they're not offering 70% off like Michael's does. So it was definitely pricier to go this route, but I think maybe like once or twice a year for special pieces, I'm just gonna go the more expensive route. Um, and what I had in mind was a kind of dark red um, frame, like, or even almost like a cherry wood. That's kind of what I had in my head. And I wish I had taken a picture of the molding we picked, but it should be in, in a couple of weeks. And then I'll, of course, frame this and show you guys. But I did pick um, a kind of dark red textured frame with a light wood fillet to kind of match the brown tones. Um, I think it's gonna be so gorgeous. So yeah, I can't wait till that comes in. And I will show you guys how I frame it. Um, I also, uh, I did ask her like, oh, can you just build me the frame? And then I want to mount my cross stitch myself. And, um, you know, she was like, are you sure? I mean, you know, like kind of being like, it's hard to do. And I was like, I didn't tell her, but I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> I was like, do you know how many pieces I framed over the last two years? <laughs> Um, but I want that like high quality specialty, like molding, like, you know, I don't want, um, I didn't want to just go pick, um, like a store-bought frame. Like I really wanted something special, um, and custom on this. So, um, I cut down the cost a tiny bit by mounting it myself, but really it's just because I am a perfectionist and I really like how I mount my pieces and I don't want to let anyone else do it. I don't know. Uh, I think if I ever sit anything to total framing, I know they're really known for how well they pin their pieces. So I'd probably be a little more like, okay, yeah, y'all do it. <laughs> Especially because you're mailing it off. So like if something goes wrong and you want to take it back into them, you'd have to ship it. I, like I'm not in, are they in Virginia? I don't remember. But with this, like with my local place, if for some reason I feel like I'm not doing a good job or I want them to seal up the back, um, I can just run down the street and have that done. So, yes, that's my Winter Rose Manor, and that is what I finished this week. Um, let me get out the whips. Okay, first up, I worked a little bit more on my Be Mine Biscornu from Heartstring Samplery. And here's what that's looking like. So this is like as far over as it goes, and then it's a square, so... I'm about a quarter of the way through it. So cute. I really, really do like having seasonal stitches on the go. Um, I was watching Helen D and she was talking about how she just likes to stitch for the season she's currently in and if she doesn't finish it that season, she picks it up the next season and goes along. And I kind of am like that too. Um, you know, there's pieces I love stitching on, but kind of as soon as the season passes, I'm kind of like, okay, well, move on to the next one and I'll let it sit till next year um, or until I just feel like stitching on it again. So, um, you know, that'll be kind of what happens with this one. I'm going to keep working on this one for now, but if I don't finish this before Valentine's Day, then it'll just come back out next year. So um, I'm stitching this. Oh, goodness. What am I stitching this on? Oh, yeah. So I'm stitching this on 40 count Old Town Blend by r and &R. And I'm using most of the called for, but I realized last week I did change my red. I believe I'm using Aztec red. I think it called for brick or some, or baked apple from Weeks, which is really pretty, but it's like a faded red and I wanted like a brighter red. So I'm pretty sure I'm using Aztec red as my, uh, or Red Rocks. 
I think it's Red Rocks. I guess I could check. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm using Red Rocks as my as my brighter red. So that's my Be Mine Biscornu. Okay, so after I finished Winter Rose Manor, I told you guys I was going to pull out land that I love. And I did. And I worked on this probably three days, three or four days this week. I put a lot of, a lot of time into this one and I love it. <laughs> um, I didn't iron anything this week, so hopefully everything still looks okay. But here's this one, um, because I kind of hold it back so you can see all of it. I was working on um, the kind of strawberry border and the top middle. Um, I'm trying to get this page finished that kind of runs from, let's see, it's like this page that I'm trying to finish. Um, and so I just got, you know, a little bit more to finish that page off. And yeah, I love this one so much. I think when I finish the page I'm currently on, I'll be about halfway done with this piece almost. I mean, the bottom is so dense. It's got two more giant houses. So like, realistically, I'm probably not halfway, but <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend I am. Um, yeah, so oh, sorry if you can hear rustling in the background. <laughs> I love this door open. I only leave the door open when I'm in here because of the kitten and he loves to come in here and play because it's like a freaking wonderland for kittens in here. There is so much stuff to get into, so much tissue paper to crinkle, so much yeah, there's a lot to do. So anyways, if you hear noises, it's the kitten playing. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm stitching this on 36 count limestone Zweigert that I over dyed with gray and brown. And I'm using all of the call for colors. And I stitch um, one over two on 36 count. I get that question a lot. So anytime um, I stitch on 36 count. It's always one over two. I've never stitched two over two on 36. I love the way it looks. And that's what I go with because I love stitching with one strand. So that is my land that I love. Jonesy, what are you doing? Next up is my Mirabilia Florentina. And I think I only worked one night on this. So I didn't get a lot of progress, but this is still kind of my bed project. Um, where's my needle? There it is. So here is where she's at. I just was still working on the bottom of that dress, kind of filling in um, all of that white and purple, which is what I'll be doing for the next <laughs> 20 times I work on this. But just got to keep moving because I want to see this lady finished like this year, maybe. Oh, I'm stitching this on I always forget. It's always in the description box below, but I like to say it. 32 count picture this plus chalice two over two with all the called for DMC and petite treasure braid instead of Krydic. Oh, also there were a lot of good tips. Um, I mentioned the Mirabilia charts and for those of you unfamiliar, I'll show you um, kind of what the charts look like. So um, this is it folded into fours. So you have like your charts or your legend. Um, but then it's like this big, huge, I'm gonna hold it way back here so you can't see the chart, but you know, it's this huge double-sided piece of paper, um, which is, and it's just like, well, here, I'll show you right here. Like, look how small the symbols and stuff are. So, um, a lot of people put their tips in the last video, um, comments about like how they deal with the chart. Um, I have photocopied and enlarged but I just have like a home printer scanner and it's not like the best quality. So my, um, my method is I just took pictures of the chart in sections and then I just pull up the page, you know, or the photo that I'm working from and zoom it in on my computer so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's how I manage my Mirabilia chart. I wish, does this work on Pattern Keeper? Does anyone know if Mirabilia charts? Like if you turn it into a PDF? I don't have an Android tab. Well, let's see, I have a Nook, a Barnes and Noble Nook. Does that have Android on it? I don't know, but I have like an iPad. I don't have an Android tablet. So um, I haven't been able, you know, like I've never tried Pattern Keeper. And also I don't stitch a lot of full coverage, which I think 
is what Pattern Keeper is kind of designed to help with. This is like as close to full coverage, um, you know, as I'm going to stitch right now. Or those stockings that I did. Those are pretty full coverage. But like I'm not like a hade stitcher or anything. So um, I don't know. I've just never tried Pattern Keeper, but I hear people love it. So someday I'll try it. Okay, and then the last thing that I worked on this week was a new start that I started on Friday night. Jonesy. Okay, um, Jonesy. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing I worked on this week was actually a new start that I started Friday night, and I'm already obsessed with it, and it's the only thing I've stitched on for the last 24, 48 hours, whatever time it is. <laughs> Um, and it is a winter themed project. Um, talking about stitching in the season, I started Quaker Snowflakes by Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, I have the PDF, so I'll put the picture of it up on the screen. And I decided to do the blue fabric version because I specifically bought this piece of fabric. Ooh, looks so cool. Um, this is 40 count fathom by picture this plus liz calls for 40 count or 30 i think she did the blue one on 32 count haunted by picture this plus which is a lighter blue but um i found this 40 count piece of fathom and i bought this specifically to do this pattern last year and um it's just been sitting in my stash and i was like I know this fabric is meant for this chart. There's nothing else I'm going to stitch on this fabric. Like, let's just start this chart. <laughs> I also say I'm not going to stitch anything else on this fabric. This is a fat eighth. I cut my fat quarter apart, so I still have a fat eighth for anything else to go on. So I will at some point stitch something else on this. But anyways, this fabric was sitting there with just this chart in mind. And so I went ahead and got a start on Quaker Snowflakes and I am obsessed with how it looks on this fabric. I love it so much. I am using NPI Silk. I didn't have the exact colors that Liz calls for um, in the chart and it's just three colors. So it's white for 95% of the chart. And then there is um, some green trees and a little red bird. And so I just pulled out of my NPI stash um, a white, a slightly different white than what she called for, but I think it looks great. And then I pulled um, a kind of faded red and a green that I like. So yeah, I've been stitching on this and I love it. And I'm going to keep stitching on this all day, I think, while I watch um, the Cowboys game. <laughs> I'm so nervous for that game. <sighs> the Cowboys have been good this season, but like very hit or miss against bad teams um I know no one cares about football like I care about football but I'm nervous for that game and I'm filming right before I go in to my living room to sit down for that game so I'm just gonna pretend that I already know the outcome they won wasn't that exciting it was such a great game <laughs> god I hope they don't lose okay uh <laughs> picture this plus fathom which I did not realize was a water measurement I know fathom as the word that means like I can't even comprehend you know I can't fathom it but did you know that fathom is also a unit of measurement for the depth of water that's equal to two feet no two yards it's equal to six feet <laughs> anyways learned that the other night <laughs> Okay, so the only bit of haul I got this week was from Anita's Little Stitches, where I got the toasted marshmallow that I needed to finish the Winter Rose Manor. And then because I didn't want to just order one floss and pay more in shipping for just one floss, I was like, let me see what kind of fabric they have because I'm a fabric hoarder. Um, and so I got this piece of 36 count Sanguine from Weeks and it's on the new Zweigert base, which I don't think I've ever come across um sanguine died on the Zweigert base so I got a piece of 36 count because that is my love 36 count um and then I also got something that I pre-ordered in let me open it because this plastic is so crinkly so this is a panel um this is a panel a ruby star panel that I pre-ordered and it's just basically these big blocks that I kind of want to fussy cut and turn into a really cool quilt. 
So, um, yeah, it's just a panel of awesome stuff. And I love it. So, yeah, I feel like I pre-ordered this, like, months and months ago. But it just showed up. And I love it. And um, I've got to think of a way to cut this apart and use it. Because, yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I really love, like the typewriter and the pins and just like the very 70s feel. Um, I think this fabric line is Stay Gold by Ruby Star if you're looking for it. And look at this little bee. It's like, or wasp, I don't know, it's like pixelated but it almost looks like cross stitch. So cool. Okay, so that is my haul and this is where the video would normally wrap up with me rambling but Instead, I am going to do a little bit of a quilt whip parade and quilt plan chat. I don't know. <laughs> I ran out of what I was going to say. Um, I've got a stack of quilt whips over here. Oh, and I've got a little sad kitten who came back into the craft room to help me. Um, so let me get those situated and I'm going to run through kind of current quilts in progress and a couple of kits. Maybe I have to kick this kitten out, we'll see. Um, and then a couple of kits that I have plans to start and kind of want to get kicked off. Um, yeah, so let's get that going. I've got a stack of containers <laughs> in front of me. Quilts are hard, quilt whips are hard to show because it's like little piece of fabric. It's not like I have a lot together to show, I don't know. We'll see, I probably have to put a little pic like pictures and stuff in to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about because otherwise I'm just holding up pieces of fabric at you. So in my first container, I have a churn dash quilt with cotton and steel fabrics. <laughs> um, these are gonna be repeats by the way, a lot of these because I did a quilt whip video a year and a half ago. So um, this one hasn't changed. I have not worked on this one in a year and a half. And this one is churn dash squares in um, this style and this style. So I can get four out of a fat quarter. Um, I have this fat quarter bundle and I was doing um, four churn dashes per fat quarter with this color of Kona. So um, this is not like a standard pattern. This is just a churn dash block um, that I was gonna make, let's see, four times 12, 48 of these, these are eight inch. So I was gonna make 48 of these eight inch churn dashes and then figure out how I wanna set them and it was gonna be a quilt. And it probably still will be, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not unkidding this, this is still in progress. I've just got the first four blocks done and I never came back and did the rest of them, but I, I will, I will. <laughs> okay, next up, flag quilt. Um. This one is not that far from being finished. I should just finish it. And I get it out and work on it. I have worked on it this year. I've made a few more blocks. Um, I just need to sit down and spend like three or four hours making the rest of these blocks and put them together and it would be done. But um, this one is these flag blocks and I've kind of got just different combos of blue and red stripes, um, all kinds of, all of my fabrics cut out in here and paired up and ready to just be sewed. Well, I think I might actually need to cut out the white. I think that's maybe what's slowing me down. I need to cut out all of the white strips so that every, oh wait, no, I, well, oh no, I don't. I have um, some of them cut out, but then I have the rest of my white right here. And then I could just put it together and be done. <laughs> but, um, you know, I haven't. This one's been in the prog in progress for a couple of years and I need to just sit down and finish it because there's no reason it should be lingering except that I just haven't been motivated to work on it. So um, this one is also not from a pattern, although I did get the idea for this quilt from a Bonnie and Camille. Maybe it was just Camille. Um, they have like her and her mom have two, like they each have their own pattern companies. And I can't remember whose pattern it is, but I'll put it up on the screen. I think it's called Stars and Stripes. Um, and obviously like that's what inspired my version. I just didn't, I just created my own version of it, I guess you would say. Um, so yes, that's in progress. Next up in an even bigger container because it has a lot more fabric is my single girl quilt. And this is a quilt by Denise Schmidt. 
and this has been in progress for probably five or six years. <laughs> this I started um, during a phase I call I'm only allowed to start complicated quilts because I was making so many quilts at that time. I was just like, I'm running out of space. Like I can't keep making this many quilts. So I've got to make harder quilts. This will take me longer to finish. Except you know what happened? I didn't finish those harder quilts because I got sick of working on them. And so then I went and made easier quilts. And so I need to just like know myself and know that I am not going to finish super complicated quilts. That's just not... It's just not what I'm gonna do. Maybe every once in a while I'll do super complicated quilts, but like I get bored with them and then I don't finish them and I really want this one done. So I have a lot of blocks made, um, different backgrounds. Um, here's a different background. Different backgrounds with all my little wedges. And um, I think I have most, let's see. I have a lot more of my backgrounds and stuff cut out. And then I have all of my rings, you know, assembled. I just have to get the rest of my backgrounds cut out and then put all of the wedges together. So the quilt top together. This one again, like it's really a lot of the hard work is done, which to be honest, the hard work was, oh, I just dropped them. But basically... <laughs> It's like so much harder to show off quilt whips than it is to show off cross stitch whips. FYI. Um, let's see, I dropped all of it, but let me. But basically in the pattern, you get these shapes. Um, none of them are square. You can't cut these out with a ruler. And so what I did is I traced them onto this kind of template-y type paper um, and marked the direction up. So I have all of these cut out and I had to cut out, you know, all of the individual pieces of fabric um, and keep them all in order <laughs> so that I could put these rings together because um, every single piece of fabric is a different shape to create this ring, uh, of course. And <laughs> so that was the hard part. And now I have everything cut out and I just need to assemble it all. But I do have to cut out the weird background shapes, which are, you know, tedious. And then I have to sew the wedge in. So it's, you know, sewing curves, which isn't as straightforward as just sewing straight lines. But I mean, I can do it. I just keep avoiding finishing this quilt. So that's why it's been a whip for years. But again, it will get done eventually. I love this and want this quilt done. I just haven't done it. And also I started it when I was very single. <laughs> And I was like, oh, the single girl quilt. It's perfect because I'll never have a wedding ring quilt. <laughs> so like, I mean, obviously it doesn't matter what the name of the quilt is. I still want the quilt and it doesn't matter that I'm getting married. But it is just funny to me now that like, I don't know. I was like, you know, I, don't, I was feeling sassy. And I was like, single girl quilt. I don't need a man, which I don't. But um, I have one now and I don't necessarily feel like raw raw single girl quilt, but I also really want this quilt done. That was kind of a weird rant and a peek inside my brain. So will I leave that in or will I edit it out? We'll find out if you're seeing this. I decided to just put myself out there. Okay, next quilt. <laughs> Okay, this next one that's in progress, I have barely anything done. I just started cutting it out last Christmas, and then that's as far as I got. And it is the Ombre Picnic Quilt. And I bought a kit to do this in Christmassy colors. So it's this exact quilt. It's just slightly different colors. Um, let me see if I have a picture in here. They might have one online. So yeah, this one I just keep in one of these 12 by 12 scrapbook cases. Um, I saw this tip on somebody's video a year and a half or so ago, and I switched to a lot of um, these boxes for things where I'm making blocks because they fit 12 inch blocks so well. And it's just nice to sort out, you know, my cut fabric in here. So that's how I've been storing um, a lot of my newer quilt whips. Okay, this is the next box. And this is my 
how do I describe it? It's my kind of like sampler, Americana sampler quilt, I think is what I called it. I started this right after Christmas last year and I was so gung ho. But the problem is I decided it was going to be a sampler quilt, meaning I'm making a ton of different blocks and you can't like sit down and cut everything out and then have everything ready to go because like you're kind of deciding like every block is different I'm using a ton of different fabrics I'm using different books so I was using Lori's book to get some 12 and 6 inch block ideas um I was using Moda Blockheads um 6 and 12 inch blocks and yeah I was doing a lot of things um <laughs> so oh I just realized I just knocked this out of the book this was a pre-cut block and I don't know what block this was for so that'll be fun to figure out later I haven't worked on this one in like six months to be honest so I have just a bunch of six inch blocks um done and then I have a bunch of 12 inch blocks that are done so this one I mean I'll show I'll put a picture that I have up on the screen um of like all the blocks I have done and I have an idea to finish it um, using less blocks than I was originally planning because if I go the original route, I'm just never going to finish it. But I haven't even worked on it since I decided to make it smaller and easier. So I need to get motivated <laughs> at some point <laughs> to finish off the sampler quilt because it's going to be beautiful. And... I'm excited about it. So that's one of my quilt whips. Okay. And then the last one is this Christmas one. And this one is pretty, I mean, not close, but like I have everything cut out. So it just needs to be assembled. It's just, they are complicated quilt blocks. Um, not complicated, but like tedious. Like there's a lot of seams. I don't know how else you describe that in quilting. Sorry. I'm trying to rearrange while I talk to you. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to, undo what I have in here but basically I've got a ton of half square triangles I've got all kinds of squares and rectangles of different shapes um I do have some assembled you know what it's okay I'm not gonna dig it out I'll put the picture of the quilt pattern up on the screen and you can kind of see from oops you can kind of see from my fabric so I'm using the fig tree Christmas fabric line Christmas figs and pairing it up light and dark um and greens versus reds to make this log cabin style quilt pattern that I found. I can't remember the name, but I'm putting it up on the screen for you, I'm sure. Um, and my goal was originally to get it done by this Christmas. And I got really far. I got everything cut, prepped to sew all the blocks. But, um, you know, with my mom being in the hospital and we were traveling over Thanksgiving, um, it got away from me and I never finished this one. So... This is definitely one I will be coming back to and yes <laughs> um that's my last quilt whip uh yeah the actual quilt in progress so one two three four five six only six right seven seven <laughs> it's not too bad definitely not as much as cross stitch I can't keep that many quilts on the go some of them have to get finished <laughs> They take up a lot more space um, than cross stitch. So yeah, that's why I cannot have 40 quilt whips. Otherwise I probably would. <laughs> okay, and then for quilt plans, um, first thing on the list that needs to get started at some point is Allison's 30th birthday quilt. And the quilt she picked out is one I have kitted and ready to go. And it is the Aviatrix medallion from Elizabeth Hartman. So I'll put the picture up on the screen. Oh, this cat. I can't keep him in here while I'm filming because he's just going to knock stuff over. Um, anyways, Aviatrix Medallion. I have it all kitted up and ready to be cut out, but I just haven't done it yet. It's intimidating. There's a lot of pieces. So that needs to get started. And then next on the list, these I don't have... Well, actually, no. I have a quilt pattern picked out for this one. So this is a fat quarter bundle that I showed you guys... I don't know. I think I hauled this a few months ago. It's Heather Bailey for Figo Fabrics. And I think this is called True Kisses 2. She had a True Kisses line. And then this is like True Kisses 2, like a follow-up. And I'm just obsessed with these fabrics and these colors. 
um, very bright, very fun, cheerful, like just, I love Heather Bailey. I followed her blog and her fabric collections for the last 10 or 15 years, however long she's been designing. So I had to have this and there is a quilt pattern, um, that was released for the True Kisses one line that I really want to do with this True Kisses fabric. So I'll put that up on the screen so you can see kind of like what I have in mind for this. I don't have like an idea of when I'm going to start this, but that's something I want to do. And then next up, I actually don't have a pattern picked out for this one, but this is a bundle of laundry basket quilts, um, sweethearts. I think it's called Little Sweethearts. Yeah, it's the Little Sweetheart fabric bundle uh, that I pre-ordered from Fat Quarter Shop probably six to eight months ago when I first saw it. And then I got it just uh, maybe a couple of months ago. And I, I haven't picked a quilt pattern for it, but I'm just obsessed with all the reds and pinks. And it's very similar vibes to the Laundry Basket Fat Quarter bundle that I used for my king size quilt that I made last year. Um, although that would had like more rusty earth tones in it as well as pinks and reds. Um, this one's very just pink red cream. And yeah, I want some sort of lovely Valentine's Day red couch quilt out of this, but I don't have a pattern picked out, but this is like high on my radar because I really want to use this fabric. So yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's all the quilt stuff I want to share with you guys this week. Um, I keep saying it every week, but I need to get back in here and sew something. Um, yeah, someday soon. I have a three-day weekend this weekend, so that's why I'm filming kind of late on a Sunday. Um, just because, I don't know, we're watching football and hanging out, and I was like, let me go do this before the Cowboys play at 3.30, even though they've already played. They already won. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so, Okay. I think that's the video for this week. I don't think I have anything else I need to talk about. I didn't bring my notes in here, so if I forgot something, I'll mention it next week. And yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching and we're hitting 13,000 subscribers soon, or assuming if um, like 100 more people subscribe to me. So maybe we'll do a giveaway soon. <laughs> It's just the craziest, craziest thing to imagine 13,000 people wanting to watch me talk about cross stitch and quilting. And as crazy it is, as it is, it's also just so much fun because this past year and a half has just been such a cool like experience and a cool outlet to have to just talk about all of the stuff that I am passionate about. Um, I said last week, like craft is life. <laughs> and um, I heard from so many of you who just like really felt that statement and were like, yes, that describes me exactly. And like, yes, I know. Like, if you want to watch me talk about cross stitch and quilting, you probably feel the same way I do about doing all these crafts, right? And like, hashtag craft is life. <laughs> Um, somebody was saying they wanted a t-shirt with it on it. Me too. Like, maybe I need to look into that. Craft is life. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just rambling and trying to think of reasons to keep talking. <laughs> so I'll end this and I'll see you in my next video, uh, next Sunday. <laughs> Bye.